Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I will be doing a often requested playthrough of Combat Commander Europe using uh, James Watton's uh, solo bot, uh, CC bot AI system for Combat Commander. And I've, uh, I've picked a scenario to play through. Uh, like I said, many people have requested since my previous video a couple of years ago showing how the bot works. They wanted to see it actually in action. So kind of been hesitant about this because I'm not the greatest uh, war game player. Uh, this is my favorite game. I love playing it. I, you know, I, I don't care if I win or the bot wins, but uh, um, I do like to play it. So um, this is not a how to play combat commander. Uh, I will do the best I can. I'm pretty sure, pretty confident with the rules, but I'm probably not going to be the best strategist at this. Um, so I'm not trying to teach anyone good strategy for combat commander, but I am teaching how to to implement uh, the solo bot. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. I've got this set up. This uh, first video, we're going to be going through the setup of everything, the mission. Um, and the decks and the uh, action board and so on and so forth. So um, got the uh, got the instruction sheet here. Uh, 3.1 instructions. Uh, the board is still a 3.0 board. Um, I have picked for this scenario. We're going to do scenario 11. This is from the uh, Combat Commander Europe base game. I'm only using um, components from the base game. So if, you, if that's all you have, then you'll be able to do this as well. Uh, but this will work for all of Combat Commander Europe. It has not been updated for Pacific, uh, but it will work with all the scenarios for Combat Commander Europe and all the different factions therein. So um, so anyway, we have uh, set up for Scenario 11, as I said. This is Hold the Line. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, July 1944, July 7th saw a brief battle in which German forces were forcibly evicted from their hilltop defenses near the Vire River. The small American force that won the day, elements of the 743rd Tank Battalion, including an immobilized M4 Sherman, was then tasked to hold the hills until reinforcements could arrive to relieve them. Sergeant White orders infantry to dig in atop the dominant hill as Sergeant Bueller prepped his shaken tank crew. It is now just before dawn July 8th, and the dim morning glow is punctuated by a flare igniting over Hill 104. The expected German counterattack has arrived. U.S. reinforcements have not. So here is our order of battle. And I've already got the tokens, the counters pulled. And now we are going to go through and set this up. So we've got all the counters here for the Germans. The counters here for the Americans. And the control markers are already in place at the start of the game. The allies have control of 1, 2, 4, and 5. And the Germans only have control of 3. The allies will set up on this side of the board 10 hexes deep. And the Germans will set up on this side of the board 1 hex deep after the, after the allies have set up. So let us start from here. So we're going to put the year marker in the 1944 space, and that'll come in handy. We get reinforcements down the road. And then the next step is the victory point marker is on the 10 space. This is the uh, single page track display that I have released. It's on the blog, onceuponagame.com. I'll link it in this video, but it just makes it a lot easier for solo play and for two player play to have a smaller uh, tracking board. So victory points is 10 on the allied side. So that goes here. All right. And then the time track is on one. And sudden death is at six. One well, reason I picked this one is it's a shorter, should be a shorter uh, mission. Uh, okay. One thing with the... Um, well, I'm skipping ahead there, sorry. Troop quality. Uh, the allies the allies are a defense posture, and they are line quality and have two orders. 
So we've set that here. And the axis is an attack posture. And they have two orders. And they are elite. So we'll put that right there. Get the, get the light out of the way here. So, yeah, allies defend, axis attack, line, elite, two orders. It's going to be a very fast-paced game. Now what I was saying is the objective chits. Now one thing that is uh, different about this uh, going against the bot is all objectives are open. Since I'm going to know what the allies, I'm going to know uh, what the AI is going for. He's going to know what I'm going for as much as he knows anything. It's, it's a bot. So in this mission, uh, N and P are both open anyway. And so that's objective four and five. So the Germans four and five are, is this hill and this hill right here. Those are right now the ones that are open and worth points at the end. They're worth four victory points each at the end. So, but now uh, each side has a random. So I'm going to draw a couple of random and these won't actually be, well, these will be for the side, but they will be open. So the first one we get is open objective V, which means having all of them. And we'll put that on the axis side, going in order, and then we'll draw another one. And this one we got is W, exit points are double. All right, and so those are all our those are all our objectives for both players. All right, also for both sides, we have the German forces have a surrender marker at six on the casualty track. And the Axis has a seven. So we'll put that there. All right, so that is all set up. We have the objective control already set. And the allies set up, as I said, first 10 hexes deep, and the axis one hex deep. Now, there are a lot of special rules here. Um, we have uncleared. I'm going to set most of this up uh, off camera, but uh, we'll go over it real quick. Uh, there are 14 wires that are going to be put in specific hexes, as well as four minefields. That will be at level six. There is an immobilized Sherman tank in this. So for those of you who claim that... Uh, Combat Commander has no uh, AFVs. There is an immobilized Sherman tank. So um, this is going to be comprised of a bunker, Sergeant Bueller, a 50 cal machine gun, and a pack howitzer are going to represent that. And they have to set up in an open hex um, anywhere in the, in the area, and they cannot be on a hill. So uh, the bunker has a stacking limit of four, so it more simulates that. We've got a lot of substitutions going on in this game. In fact, these two satchel charges are uh, captured Panzerfaust in this game as well. And they can only attack, they cannot attack any hex with a cover less than two. And the Axis player will get the first turn. So let me get the, let me go ahead and set up the battle, uh, the order battle on the uh, map. And then uh, we'll come back. Forces set up. I've got the wire all set up here as, as directed in the setup instructions. I have put Sergeant Mueller and the tank back up here at the base of this hill. So he's got a line of sight down to here. Uh, the rest of the American forces I've got set up on the objective hill, number five. Uh, I've given the satchel charges to the the uh, elite team as well as one of the line teams give them the foxholes for cover and the germans have set up uh, sergeant gans and uh, he has a he has a leadership of two so we've got the sergeant gans set up here with these two ss troops with the light machine guns and then lieutenant lauerbach has a heavy machine gun with a weapon team and another ss troop i did forget to mention that the uh the Americans have reinforcements coming in on each of the next 
uh, four turns. They get a one line troop showing up gradually to help assist. And then, of course, then there's this huge minefield uh, that's left over from the previous battle that they're going to have to work their way through. Um, minefield and wire. They're going to have to work their way through for that. So that is the this setup there. We've got the board all set up and ready to go. And now we'll go over here and set up for our solo. So how the solo works, if you watched the previous video, you'll be aware of this. It's two components. It's the orders check and this action board. And normally I have this laminated, but because of the lighting uh, necessary, it was reflecting off the lamination. And so I've just, uh, I reprinted it straight on cardstock and I'm using that one here. Uh, that's the same with the, uh, the sidetrack board that I use. So, um, just so you wouldn't get a big glare every time we use it. So, um, in this one, the, uh, first thing you do is you look up at the setup table here, and this is for the posture of the AI. The AI is going to be the axis and they're on attack for this mission. So we've got these six markers. You can use anything you want. Uh, you need to be numbered one through six. You can use a uh, die, you know, with, you know, rotated uh, for their pips, uh, one through six. But first thing you do is, you know, set them up next to each track based on the pattern here. So we've got one, one, two, one. So one will go here, two will go here, three will go here, four and five will go on this track here and that gives more weight to fire and advance and assault and then number six will go here so as as i covered before if they were doing recon then they would get more emphasis on track two which would be basic drills and if they're doing defense they get more uh, emphasis on track five which would be hold and defend so it's set up to favor that then we're going to need uh, a marker for the orders check um, and this is what's going to determine if they uh, if they play a card. And you got A and R attack, recon, and defend. And so we'll put this on the A marker for attack since they're in attack mode. And the same with the action track. I've got a red marker here, and we will set the starting position here for for attack. So that is set up. Then the next thing we'll do. I have shuffled two decks. We have the standard German fate deck that they'll get their cards from is set up here and then we have I'm using the Russian fate deck here for determining um, doing their action checks uh, and so on and so forth so first thing we want to do is we want to prime these which means they're going to start at a random position on this track so each game is going to play differently because he may start here or he may start here so on and so forth so how we do that is we go one through six and move the marker based on the white die on each card all right, so this one's a three. So this one first moves three spaces in. The next one is up. It's a six. So number two is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And these these actions that it's covering don't do anything. It's the next one that'll happen. Uh, then we got a five for track three. One, two. In this case, one, two, three, four. Back to the beginning, five. Track three. Track four, we got another five. So the four marker will go one, two, three, four, five. Cover fire. And the next one is a four. He will go over here. And finally, track six is a six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes on that first fire slot. So that is set up and ready to go. And now we have to reshuffle the deck. All right, so the Fate deck is reshuffled. Now I am playing, and I'm a little surprised this was not added um, because it was discussed. Um, so normally you would draw the lower, their hand, the AI's hand that we're gonna draw from here, would be the lower of their orders versus their hand size. So in this case, both sides have two orders they can give each turn, but for attack, their hand size is going to be six, whereas mine as a defender is going to be four. 
so one thing that was discussed and James Watt did agree he did not get it added to the even the variant rules for this is if you only draw two cards because you can only play two orders um, that's fine however if you end up getting actions that doesn't that doesn't do anything for the deck for depleting it as as properly as it should so the way I'm going to play it is I'm going to go ahead and have a hand of six cards for the, for the Germans if they and then they'll you know they'll try for two actions same as same as always but um, if they excuse me for two orders get that clearly there's a difference between orders and actions so they're going to try for their two orders as per normal but if they do get an action if they get an opportunity to fire something like that uh, assault card so on and so forth they will discard one of the six cards from their hand so they'll have that constant perpetual uh, just like a, a player would have six cards play two orders and if they played an action they would discard you know the cards down so that just keeps it more realistic um, and keeps the flow of this deck since this is a timing mechanism for the game as well as for events and uh, hexes and so on and so forth it just keeps it you know for the sake of propriety so the normal rules are to draw I would only have two cards in my hand the whole time and if they get an action they just get an action but in this case I'm going to keep six for the AI and every time they play an order that card will get used but also if they get an action we'll discard the next card so that would just be a little something to uh, uh, make the game be a little more realistic now for myself playing the Americans I will have my standard uh, four card hand size and then play two cards as normal because I get to play as normal I'm not limited in any way uh, for my play so that is the setup for this mission number 11 in combat commander Europe going to go against the CC bot AI and check back for the next video and see how that goes Thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh.